Hi guys, uh, so in the previous session we were discussing own price elasticity of demand, right? We had ended at this point. Now uh, what is elasticity? Elasticity is a measure of a uh, variable's sensitivity to a change in another variable and it is commonly used to measure the responsiveness of quantity demanded of a good to a change in its own price, right? So elasticity so calculated is known as the own price elasticity of demand and elasticity of demand is calculated as or own price elasticity of demand is calculated as percentage change in quantity by percentage change in price right and if we you know decompose this particular uh, formula right we would you know we would get it in this form price elasticity of demand is change in quantity by change in price into price by and the price elasticity of demand or the own price elasticity of demand for a good is ordinarily negative right it is ordinarily negative you know because you know as per law of demand right quantity demanded falls when price of, of a good raises right the price of a good would rise its quantity demanded would fall or basically there is an inverse relationship between the price of a good right the, the price of a good and its quantity demanded now it's only in two rare cases right uh, where elasticity of demand is greater than zero right? and these two rare cases are you know when the good is a different good or the good is a Veblen good. So in these two cases only, you know, we would have that, you know, the own price elasticity of demand for a product is greater than zero. Now moving on to the next slide, guys. Right. So when the quantity demanded for a product is very responsive to change in price, we say that, you know, demand for that good is elastic and the absolute value of elasticity of demand than one when we say absolute we mean the non-negative value so when we are speaking in absolute terms we are ignoring the sign right and demand for uh, goods you know tends to be elastic which has you know which has close substitutes so right here i have taken an example of you know coke and uh, pepsi right so if price of you know coke increases the quantity demanded of coke would decrease by a lot or it would decrease substantially why because consumers would start consuming other colas like you know like pepsi and pepsi would now be relatively cheaper than coke right so people would start uh, consuming other colas right and uh, we can say that you know for a small percentage increase in the price of coke its quantity demanded would Increase by a lot, or for a given increase in the price of coke, right, the percentage decrease in quantity would be greater than the percentage increase in price, or the quantity demanded would of coke would be very responsive to a change in its own price. Now the major idea here is, guys, when the demand curve is, you know, flatter, right then the demand for that good is very very elastic right now please note here guys say at p1 the quantity demanded for a good is q1 right now what happens is that price of this good increases right such that now the price is p2 right now at p2 the quantity demanded is q2 guys we can see here that the price increased from p1 to p2 right but there was a you know substantial decrease in quantity right so price increased only by a small amount but there was a substantial decrease in the quantity demanded or we could say that the percentage decrease in quantity demanded was much much greater than the percentage increase in price 
So when the demand for a particular good is elastic, its demand curve would tend to be flatter. We could see here that you know price increased by a small amount, but the you know quantity demanded you know fell substantially. Right, the quantity demanded fell substantially. The next slide. Now, when the quantity demanded is not responsive to change in price, we say that the demand for the good is inelastic and the absolute value of elasticity of demand is less than 1. Now, this tends to be the case for goods which have no close substitutes, say a pharma drug which has hardly any close substitutes, right? The demand will fall only by a little when the manufacturer raises the price. Now this makes much sense because see consumers cannot consume less of a drug with an increase in price because you know that drug is necessary to maintain their health right so when a good has no close substitutes its its uh, its demand tends to be inelastic right and guys the steeper the demand curve the more inelastic the demand now coming to the same point, at a price of P1, quantity demanded was quantity demanded was Q1. Right? Now say price increases to P2. Now at P2, the quantity demanded is Q1. So guys, we can see here that the price increased substantially, right? But the quantity demanded only fell by a very very small amount, or you know the percentage change in quantity right was less than the percentage change in price or we could say here that the percentage decrease in quantity demanded was less than the percentage increase in price we could see this guys see price is increasing by a lot right but when price increases by a lot the quantity demanded falls only falls uh, only by a very minuscule or a very little amount. So this is the idea behind uh, own price elasticity of demand. Right. So when a good has no close substitutes, the demands tends to be inelastic and the demand curve is steeper. And when a good has close substitutes, right, its demand tends to be elastic and and curve tends to be coming to the next point guys we know that you know, your elasticity of demand for a product changes along the linear demand curve right in the upper part of the demand curve the elasticity of demand or the absolute value of elasticity of demand is greater than one and in the lower part of demand curve the absolute value of elasticity of demand being less than one right and the unitary elasticity point you know divides the elastic region and the inelastic region now above the unitary elasticity point the demand curve would be elastic and below it the demand curve would be inelastic but there are two cases where the demand curve has the same elasticity at all points the first is vertical demand curve Right. So, when the demand curve is vertical as in this uh, figure here, right, we can say that the demand curve is perfectly inelastic. Right. It is perfectly inelastic with elasticity of demand or the absolute value of elasticity of demand is zero. Right. So, guys, what is happening here that a change in price has no change in quantity demanded. Right quantity demanded is going to be the same irrespective of what the price is right so this is a vertical demand curve right so at p1 quantity demanded is q1 right at p2 right if price increase from p1 to p2 still the quantity demanded won't change it would still be q1 and say if the price decreased from p1 to say p0 still the quantity demanded will be q1 change right there is no change in quantity demanded when the price changes 
then is uh, we have the horizontal demand curve guys so when the demand curve is horizontal we call it perfectly elastic with elasticity of demand being infinite right so guys the idea behind this is that at a price of p0 the consumer would buy some unknown unknown large quantity but if the price increases right the demand for the product would vanish or you know conversely we can say that at a price of p0 the firms can sell as much as they want but if they increase their price right if they increase their price the quantity demanded would vanish right now this is a reasonable description of a demand curve for a firm in a perfectly competitive market right the firms can sell as much as they want at uh, the price of p0 but if they increase their price the demand would vanish okay now guys factors assessing the you know affecting the elasticity of demand we already discussed when there is availability of close substitutes right when there are many close substitutes available the demand is elastic i had given you example of coke and pepsi when the demand is elastic the demand curve tends to be flatter right and we have already discussed this as well you know when uh, there are limited substitutes available for product right the demand for that product tends to be inelastic and the demand curve for an inelastic good tends to be now the next point is the proportion of income spent on the good right so if the price of a soap that you use daily increases by say 20% you are like less likely to switch to other brands of soap right because this 20% increase is only a small portion of your total income so the demand for soap would be inelastic however if you were thinking to buy a home and the price of that home increased by 20% now guys you won't be you know you're not going to buy that home anymore right because the increase in the price of the home is a substantial portion of your budget right so an increase in the price of a home would you know would you know reduce the quantity demanded of homes substantially you know implying that demand for homes are elastic right now moving to the next slide elasticity of demand tends to be greater in the long run than in the short run so guys say if you know prices of energy or prices of fuel increase right you are not going to change your consumption of fuel in the short run because you still have to travel you have still have to take your trips you still have to go to office you still have to drop you know children to school maybe you know so you still have to travel but in the long run what would you do in the long run you would shift to uh you know evs you would shift to uh, electrical vehicles and once you shift to electrical vehicles the demand for petrol diesel right or demand for energy would decrease drastically so elasticity of demand tends to be greater in the long run right and not in the short run because in the short run you still have to travel you still have to make your trips last is necessity of the good so for necessary goods like milk eggs and bread say price of milk eggs and bread increase right you are you are still not going to reduce your consumption by a lot because such products are required you know for running your required for running your household right so if prices of such products increase your demand won't decrease much it would only decrease maybe little you know even prices of discretionary products like meals in fine dining restaurants italian bistro bistro italian restaurants or french bistros meals at such restaurants increase obviously you would demand less of it right if the you know price of a exotic holiday increases right then you are less likely to take that holiday you less likely to buy that trip right so or discretionary products right if prices of discretionary products increase right people would tend to buy much much less of it right so guys this is the idea hope you are good with